Hi, I'm Hub Arkish, along with Eric Edholm for Pro Football Weekly, and we're here to try and give you, in layman's terms, the quick rundown of how we got into this mess between the owners and the players to begin with. And it really has to go back to almost five years ago today, 2006, when the players and the owners did allow their CBA to expire, and they weren't really arguing about anywhere near as significant a factors as they are today. The owners wanted more restrictive free agency, the players wanted a little bit more money, the deadline came, both sides walked away, and the owners panicked because they they were going to lose their salary cap. At that time, the only hard salary cap in the NFL. They got back together, crammed through a deal that a lot of owners weren't happy about, but some owners, including Jerry Richardson of the Carolina Panthers, felt, we have to do this now. We can't lose the salary cap. They did get the opt-out clause in 2008, but Eric, it was basically signing a deal that they weren't happy with in 2006 that got the owners into this position and has caused them to take such a hard line stand because they don't want to make what they feel was that mistake again. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're taking the stance that they signed a bad deal and they did it in their you know in their words for the betterment of the league for the sake of getting something done at the time now on the flip side they're not necessarily asking the players to take a bad deal their stance has always been let's get a fair deal done and the problem that you all have as fans we have as media and many of the owners and players have is we're not sure what makes that new deal or what is now the old deal so bad the owners are claiming that costs have risen faster than their revenues have. The players are saying we're happy with the deal. That much we understand. They were ready to go for two more years. The owners want more money off the top to use to build new stadiums. It's really that simple. And right there you get a problem because the players have said, okay, we'll consider this. Show us why you need it. The owners have refused to open their books and let the players see why they feel they need this money. The owners are already getting $1 billion off the top of total revenue before anything is shared. In the new deal, they want $2 billion. They're saying the players should give it back because it will allow them to build new facilities, create new revenue lines, and eventually the players will get even and then make more money. The next biggest issue, the 18-game schedule, but there's not really that big a debate there. That's a leverage piece for the players. They know they've got to go to 18 games because by adding those two games, they'll also add a second bye week. That's three more NFL Sundays. You're talking about an average of $400 million per NFL Sunday. That's $1.2 billion in new revenue, the only place they can find new revenue. And if they can divvy that up appropriately, that almost gives the owners what they want. Yeah, and the current CBA, the one that's soon to expire, includes a clause that allows the owners to go to 22 games. So they're working on, on this issue on both sides. So, and the players have kept their message, we don't want 18 games. That has allowed them, like you said, leverage to improve their stance in these negotiations. A rookie wage scale would be next on the list. Both sides agree that it's necessary. Over half a billion dollars spent on rookies last year in 2010. The owners and the players have said, let's knock that down to about 200 million. What they're arguing about is where the other 300 to 350 million is gonna go. Both sides willing to give some of it to retired players, players retired before 93, but not sure what to do with the rest. The owners would like some of it, the players want it. That will get worked out. Next biggest issue, those pre-93 retirees, how do they take care of them? Again, Eric, I think these are the easy parts. Once they can get comfortable with whether the owner should get a billion dollar give back, this is gonna fall in the line relatively quickly. Yeah, I suspect most of the progress they've been able to make up to this point have been some of the ancillary issues. The biggest thing, like you said, is how to split up that revenue. That is the bottom line issue. And all these other issues, they're tied into money. So let's just say it, money has been the biggest reason that we've got to this point. There are safety concerns, there are drug testing issues, there's always a lot of issues on the agenda, but if they can deal with those top four, the big guys, the rest will fall in the line, and it will, folks. We will have football in 2011. The question is, where will the egos take a back seat and allow them to get a deal done? For Pro Football Weekly, he's Eric Edholm, I'm Hub Arkish, and we're with you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, right here at ProFootballWeekly.com, or you can follow us on our Twitter account as well.